Buying a home is more than just finding a place you like. It's making sure that your home will be an investment that grows in value over time. So what we're going to talk about today is what will it take to build a future-proof house that will always have buyers lined up and ready to buy. Well, hello, hello, this is Wendy Pennell and investing in a home isn't just about having a roof over your head or you know finding a dream home or all of the warm and fuzzy emotions that come with finding the perfect home. I guess those things are important, right? They're part of what makes owning a home so rewarding. But my goal in this video is to have you looking at your new home through the lens of future buyers. What you're about to buy is a long-term investment. Depending on the choices you make now, you can end up barely scraping through closing without making a dime to having multiple offers and clearing a few hundred thousand. And trust me, buyers today are savvy. They know what they want and they're not willing to settle for less. And the thing is, they don't have to. Dallas is exploding in new construction so a high quality buyer doesn't have to settle. Here in Dallas, even though existing home listings are down, the new construction competition is fierce and buyers are constantly exposed to the latest home designs and amenities. The way to look at it is your home is not just a living space. It's a financial asset and you should treat it that way. Here's the bottom line. We want you to make money off this home someday, not just live in it. Okay, so if I haven't convinced you by now, listen to what fool.com has to say. And they say, when you make your monthly mortgage payments, a portion of that payment goes toward paying off the principal balance of the loan. Now this means that each month you're building equity in your home. They continue explaining over time, as you continue to pay off your mortgage, your equity in your home grows and your net worth increases. Now this is a powerful way to build wealth because it's automatic. You don't have to think about saving, it happens as you pay off your mortgage. Now that's a really good way of saying that you make money when you make your house payment. Leslie Cook from money.com dropped this bombshell. She said the average homeowner is 40 times wealthier than a renter. And of course we have Lawrence Yen, this really smart guy from the National Association of Realtors who says owning a home is like a wealth building machine that works for everyone. Well, how does that even work? Well, Habitat for Humanity puts it in simple terms. They say every time you pay your mortgage, it's like putting money into a piggy bank that keeps growing. Your home gains value and so does your wealth. It's like a win-win. In fact, check this out. A study from the Federal Reserve found that homeowners are rolling in it compared to renters. Average renters have a net worth of about $6,300, but homeowners average closer to 255,000. So again, there, there's that mindset, right? Your home isn't just a place to hang your hat, it's a place to build your future. So your home is more than just four walls and a roof, right? Okay, we've established that is a long-term investment that can seriously pay off. And just like you wouldn't throw your money into any random stock, all right, you shouldn't just settle for any home. Now think about it, if you're investing in the stock market, you're gonna pick a company that you think is gonna grow, right? I mean, you read the charts, right? You do your homework, and then finally, you place your bet. Well, the same logic applies when you're picking a home, okay? You want one that's going to appreciate in value over time, as opposed to being a money pit. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty, and this is where you might want to grab a pen and paper, okay? To make sure your home's value goes up, you've got to pay attention to what today's buyers are looking for. And that means picking or designing a home that ticks off the boxes for as many people as possible. We're talking about homes that are appealing to everyone, all right? The young couple looking for their first home, right? The empty nesters, downsizing, and the family that needs room to grow. And, and yeah, I get it, okay? These people are all in different seasons of life, but the more people who are interested in your home when it's time to sell, the higher the price you're likely to get. If you step into an older house, you'll probably find a very different floor plan compared to what today's buyers are searching for. And I want you to think about that. Some people are very naturally drawn to older homes because of the mature trees and landscaping. But think about how different those floor plans are. In older homes, as soon as you walk into the entryway, you've got your coat closet to one side, and then directly in front of you, you have a living room. You can often see it right from the front door. 
I mean, sometimes there's like a dining room, right? Immediately to your right and followed by the living room. The bedrooms are usually clustered together down one long hallway, right? Away from the main living area. And in case you're wondering, all right, what I'm describing here is like a 1970s and 80s classic ranch style home, right? The kitchen in older homes, right? It's gonna follow the plan of a galley design, right? It's gonna be narrow and elongated, just like a little bit wider than a hallway. These kitchens sometimes open at both ends, but it's also common for them to dead end at the sink. Contrast that with what today's home buyers are shopping for. Nowadays, when you walk into a newer home, you're likely greeted by a long wide hallway and bonus points if the entry has a tall ceiling or even better, looks up to a landing on the second floor with a chandelier overhead. On either side of this hallway, you're gonna find an office, a guest bathroom, or even a bedroom, okay? As you proceed down the hall, it opens up into a large, expansive space where the kitchen, living, and dining room are all together, usually with a view facing the backyard. Now, this open concept living space is something that modern buyers prize over segmented rooms. So I want you to think for a minute, if this is such a universally appealing floor plan, why would some buyers gravitate to older homes? Well, honestly, it isn't about the floor plan, okay? Usually they don't even like the old floor plan. What draws them there is mature landscaping. So before we go a step further, on talking about the inside of the home, we need to talk about the backyard. Like it or not, if you're buying in a new construction neighborhood, there are probably dozens of homes just like yours. How are you gonna make yours stand out? Well, think about the difference a backyard oasis would make. Okay, what do you typically see when you walk into the backyard of a new construction home? All right, you see a patch of grass and a wood fence on all sides, and that's it. So imagine if you added landscaping and welcoming spaces. All right, this is where you get your wow factor. I always tell our sellers, after a buyer views your home, you want them to be able to sit outside, look out over your yard, and fall in love with your home. Now keep this in mind, if your home is universally appealing, right? You know, I mean, there's nothing like weird or objectionable about it. You can sell it with your yard. Now, here's what I suggest with your yard. Cover up the fence. Intentionally buy a species of tall shrubs that are fast growing, okay? Here in Dallas, privets are an excellent choice. You also have red tip fetinias, and I'm sure there are many more, but privets are definitely my number one. They will grow very quickly and spread very quickly. And, and what you're after here is a shrub that some might even call invasive. The point is they will be the gift that keeps on giving and they won't be all that expensive because they grow quickly and spread out. Your mission is to let future buyers view greenery instead of a fence. Now here's a tip on privets, okay? They grow so fast you could pretty much dig up a few from someone who has them in their yard, you know, and without ever having to spend a dime. Okay, so you've given your future buyers some green to look at. Now keep this in mind. Nearly all Dallas new construction homes come with an irrigation system. Use it, all right? Keep your grass alive. With these two things, you've accomplished so much more than your average homeowner. To the extent you're willing to spend some money, invest in some patio furniture and mature trees. Uh, be sure to go for evergreen, if you can, right? So your yard will look beautiful year round. Now, every buyer I meet wants the same thing. They want an open floor plan with vaulted ceilings. None of them actually want the bare backyard. It's a sacrifice they make in order to get the open floor plan. They look at the backyard, they sigh, then they focus on what they're getting inside. So just imagine the immediate distinction your home makes when a buyer has viewed four other homes that all look just like yours, but your home has landscaping in the backyard. And since you bought smart, you really haven't spent that much. All right, so we've talked about turning your backyard into an oasis and you're fired up about making a smart investment. Now let's talk about what you need to do to the inside of your home to not have buyers rejecting it before they ever see the backyard. All right, so let's take a look at the house room by room. Let's start with your main living room. And first things first, flooring, okay? Can we all agree that carpet is like the flip phone of the flooring world? It's totally last decade. If you want your home to have a modern look, you know, wood or wood look floors are the way to go. They're not just stylish, they're a practical homeowner's dream, all right? Super easy to clean and durable. So trust me, if you're planning to invest in your home's interior, 
starting with your floors will give you the most bang for your buck. All right, now let's talk about ceilings and windows. Remember earlier that I mentioned vaulted ceilings? Okay, those are a must. Go for as high of a ceiling as you can afford. Vaulted ceilings can make even the smallest spaces feel a lot more open. And on the topic of windows, if you can swing it, go for a wall of windows. Okay, not only does it flood your living space with natural light, but it can also offer views of your backyard landscaping that you've worked so hard on. All right, let's talk about the kitchen. An open kitchen with an island facing your dining and living areas is a must. In the days of galley kitchens, you had one or two people cooking more or less in isolation. All right, nowadays your open kitchen and island served as your prep station where you can be with family. And the island serves as a breakfast bar and honestly it becomes sort of like the unofficial gathering spot when you have guests over. This whole open floor plan thing, okay, it's not just a trend, it's a lifestyle. It'll make your home feel bigger and much more social. And remember, what I'm telling you right now is not about you having the warm and fuzzies. All right, this is about how future buyers are going to view your home. Now let's talk about countertops, okay? I hope you're thinking solid surface materials, all right? We're talking about like quartz or granite. All right, they're durable, they're beautiful, and they elevate your kitchen's aesthetics, right? You definitely want like an undermount sink and a designated microwave area. With new construction, you're probably gonna end up with an installed microwave, but if for some reason you don't, don't ever settle for a countertop microwave. In terms of cabinetry, if you're still holding on to visions of 90s oak, it's time for an upgrade. Shaker style cabinets are the thing and the taller the cabinets, the better. Last but not least, let's talk pantries. Even your lowest price homes right now have designated pantries, okay? It has become a staple in the kitchen. Okay, now let's talk about the master bedroom. First off, location is everything. It needs to be separate from the other bedrooms. The ideal spot in today's home is a master bedroom that's tucked away at the back of the house on either side of the living area. It's gonna face the backyard and have a nice large window that overlooks the backyard. Now, as to the master bathroom, if you can swing a separate tub, that's a game changer, okay? It, even better if you can get something spacious with jets. Now, your walk-in closet, not a nice to have, a must have, okay? And again, even your most affordable homes are going to have a large master closet. When it comes to the laundry room, it absolutely has to be a separate room that you can walk into. And you want it to be as roomy as possible. I mean, I've seen laundry areas in garages, in kitchens, and as like oversized closets off a hallway. Today's buyers are not gonna put up with that. Okay, they're not super picky about what goes into a laundry room, right? It doesn't necessarily have to have like shelves and cabinets and stuff, but the most important thing is that a separate laundry room exists. Okay, so we know what buyers are going to insist on in today's market. With new construction being all the rage, your next focus really is to see how many of these things we can get included in the price as opposed to having to pay extra for upgrades. So here's the deal. When you're touring model homes, and talking to sales consultants. Don't just ooh and ah over the fancy finishes, okay? And what's included in the base price and what's considered an upgrade. Have the sales consultant walk you through the entire model home and tell you what's standard, what's an upgrade. I mean, obviously not all features are created equal and, and what you think comes standard might actually cost you extra. Each builder will have their own set of standard features and you should ask for that list right from the get go. Okay, because this is your guide to understanding what you're actually getting for the price you're quoted. So when you're out there talking to those sales consultants, ask for this list and use it as your reference point. Now, what about upgrades? Well, first of all, know that upgrades are gonna add up fast. In terms of structural upgrades, consider the things I mentioned earlier, such as wall-to-wall -wall windows and a separate tub in the master bathroom. For your other upgrades, focus on flooring, kitchens, and bathrooms, okay? That is where you're gonna get the biggest return on value. Now, I mentioned earlier that every builder will have their own list about what's standard and what's an upgrade. Now, some are absolutely going to nickel and dime you to death, okay? Now, Grand Homes is a prime example of this. 
They're known for crafting their million dollar dream homes that scream luxury, right? But here's where you might get a reality check. In their laundry rooms, all you get are basic hookups for your washer and dryer. So in a home that can cost upwards of a million dollars, if you're envisioning a laundry room complete with cabinets for storage or an extra deep sink, you know, for you know, pre-treating stains, you're gonna have to fork over more money. Grand homes are semi-custom, meaning you can make a ton of changes while still being within a designated home plan, but you're gonna have to pay for everything, okay? Every little change, every little add-on. So grand homes are gorgeous, but again, you just have to be ready to be nickel and dimed. Like grand homes, K Hovnanian homes can cater to the luxury market. With some of their properties, you're gonna find them up to like the million dollar range. And, and they have a very broad range in price. And they're what you would call a semi-production builder. In nicer areas, you'll see homes close to a million dollars in price, but in others, they're very much budget models in the $400,000 range. Now, what's weird about K-Hop Nanian is that they carry some of their budget features over into their luxury homes. Like a master bathtub, for example, you can buy an $800,000 home and still have to pay extra for a tub. I mean, in that price range, a tub should absolutely be included. That's a high demand feature and you shouldn't have to pay extra for it. Now, Bloomfield Homes also cater to multiple price ranges. You'll probably find homes in the low 300s up to the 700 range. Uh, we were recently touring one of their more affordable homes and the sales consultant was incredibly enthusiastic, going on and on about all these standard features included in the home, right? We're talking granite countertops stainless steel appliances. I mean, it really was awesome how much they included. Now, that being said, the real eye-opener, okay, came when we stepped into the backyard, okay? The back porch was like the size of a doormat. When I asked about it, the sales consultant said anything larger than that was an upgrade. Another thing is, when you're shopping in an affordable price range, you really wanna be mindful of flooring in the entryway and living room. Many of them are going to have budget level carpet there. And again, you just absolutely do not want carpet in those areas. So please don't tell me the sales price is 300,000 when right out of the gate, I have to spend an extra $15,000 on flooring. Some of your lower end builders are gonna charge this, but many will not. So you absolutely wanna do your due diligence and see if you can find a builder who will include wood look flooring in their base price. Okay, so I've mentioned a few builders here to show you the differences, but hopefully it showed you how much you need to do your homework. Maybe even make a chart to compare what's standard and what's an upgrade across different builders. Trust me, it is the best way to make an apples to apples comparison and avoid any nasty surprises down the line. Ideally, you wanna get as much house as you can at the base price, while also keeping in mind your home is an investment. Yes, it needs to fit your needs, and yes, it is an emotionally charged experience, but always in the back of your mind, be thinking about what future buyers are going to see. In spite of all the excitement and joy, all right, there's strategy here in planning for your future. Uh, we, we know that from the standpoint of equity and net worth, Home ownership historically is the way people gain wealth. Now, that being said, I wouldn't go so far as to say like, oh, it's always a good time to buy a home because honestly it's not. All right, seasonality is a huge reality here in Dallas and values routinely swing between like eight and 12% in any given year. So there is a very real value in being strategic, not just with what you buy, but also when you buy a home. I talk about that and the entire concept of seasonality in this video, which you may wanna watch next. In the meantime, Wendy out.